the last video I introduced you to heat transfer plates and went over some of the specifications about them. So if you know what you want to buy, you can just purchase them. But if you're looking to know how to install these, I'm going to show you in this video. So I'm going to go over what tools you need and some specific options about how to make your best install for these. So the basic idea behind these is to maximize the efficiency of your heating system because these distribute heat more evenly than if you just had the PEX laying by itself. Because if you think about half inch PEX tubing, it'll only heat up the area that the PEX lays down in. So these just distribute the heat more evenly. And if you think about the system without these, you're going to have to operate it at a much higher temperature range to reach your desired temperature. So for this installation, imagine that this is a joist bay on a ceiling. But just for the demo, it's easier to work on the floor and show you how to do it. So at first, I'm just going to start off by drilling holes in the joists to run the PEX through. And this is a one inch boring bit I'm using for half inch PEX. So important thing to consider when you're drilling your holes is to make them low enough to avoid nails once the subfloor is installed. So if you install the PEX and then they go to install the subfloor and your joist holes aren't low enough, the pipe can get a nail or a screw through it. These are called suspension clamps and I suggest installing these in every joist hole because the tubing has to go through every joist in your ceiling, which is a lot. And the, as the system expands and contrasts, the tubing will rub against the wood everywhere. So these suspension clamps will reduce noise and prevent damage to the pipe over time. So next, before you install your heat plates, you're going to want to lay the PEX out. So this is half inch oxygen barrier PEX tubing. And what you're going to want to do is start from the joist bay furthest from the manifold and then work your way towards the manifold. So I'm going to say the manifold's over there for this demonstration. And each joist bay is going to have two lengths of PEX run per bay. And you're just going to want to make a loop in every bay and have it run back. So I'm going to show you that now. You may want to consider using PEX out PEX because this serves the same function, but it expands less and it's easier to install since it stays in place when you bend it. To figure out the amount of PEX you need, figure out the length of each bay and multiply it by two since there will be two runs of PEX per bay. Then figure out the distance to the manifold and multiply that by two. Those two numbers should give you the amount of PEX you need. Depending on how large the area is you need to cover, you may need multiple PEX circuits to connect to the manifold. So once you install your PEX run, you can start installing the heat plates. To reduce line noise, you can apply a thin layer of clear silicone glue to the tubing channel prior to installing your PEX. I would suggest using 3 8 inch staples with a hand or electric stapler or half inch staples with a pneumatic gun. But for this I'm using a drill and screws because I only have to do a few bays. These joists are spaced to be average joists which are installed 16 inches apart on center spacing. So you would need about 62 foot plates for every 100 square feet of space. They're snapped into the PEX tubing and secured to plywood or wooden subfloor surface with nails, screws, or staples. You should leave a buffer space on both ends of the bay to root the PEX in the next bay, so make sure you leave enough space. These aluminum plates can be cut with a miter saw equipped with a multi-tooth carbide aluminum cutting blade, a bandsaw, or a hacksaw. So after everything is installed and the PEX is connected to your manifold, the system should be pressurized to 50 PSI around 40 hours before covering. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can insulate below your tubing with radiant foil covered insulation boards. And the idea is that any heat that wasn't transferred through conduction will be transferred through convection. So like I just showed you, these heat plates can be installed between floor joists, but they can also be installed on top of subfloor or submerged in concrete. Some people install these plates in basements with a concrete structure above. For that, you can secure the plates with high quality caulking with a good thermal conductivity rating. And if you want to make sure it's really secure, you can use a ram set gun as well. And lastly, if you are looking to install a radiant floor system, you should consider installing an air eliminator with your system because it'll remove any air bubbles from your system to make it operate fully. And I have another video where I explain all your air eliminator options and you can watch that after this. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, there's a lot of plumbers that comment below so maybe you can ask someone there and someone can help you and like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel.